I'm going to quickly review the concept of the gear ratio which could be used for determining the torques in the gear systems. So the gear ratio is simply defined as the ratio between the diameter of two gears when they are connected together, or the radius of two gears, or the number of teeth between two gears that are connected together. So all of them are equal to each other, okay? We call that as gear ratio, but the question is how to use the gear ratio properly to determine the internal torques. There are five rules that we need to remember when we want to work with the gear assemblies, okay? The very first one says, the power in a system is constant. We assume the system is frictionless. There is not any power loss in the system. Once we input the power from one end of the system, we get the same power at the other end, okay? The second rule is used when we are having two gears connected together, like the one that is shown here teeth to teeth. In that case, we need to know what happens to the torque and the velocities when we want to move from one gear to another gear. Rule number two simply says torque increases by moving from smaller gear to larger gear. And that's the way that we can determine what is the appropriate gear ratio for that. Opposite to that, the velocity, the angular velocity is decreasing when we are moving from smaller gear to larger gear, okay? So knowing these two rules, we are able to pick up the right gear ratio for our problem. Look into this specific case. In this configuration, we have diameter of C larger than diameter of B. And assume that we want to determine what is T in C in terms of torque at B. What is the gear ratio? Is gear ratio DC over DB or DB over DC? So what I know is torque in gear C should be larger than torque in gear B based on the second rule. What does it mean? The gear ratio should be larger than one. So I can say that TC is equal to gear ratio multiplied by TB, but gear ratio should be larger than one in this case. And that helps me finding appropriate ratio for this case. So gear ratio should be DC over DB because it has to be larger than one. Does that make sense? Now consider the same case, but assume that we want to determine twist in C in terms of twist in B. In that case, what is the gear ratio? In this case, we use the same equation. Velocity in C is equal to gear ratio multiplied by velocity in B but gear ratio here in this case is smaller than one because the velocity in the larger gear would be smaller than the velocity in the smaller gear. So gear ratio would be reverse of what we had before, dB over dc. That's it. Um, we do have other two rules, four and five, which are used when there are two gears connected by shaft. In that case, whatever the angular velocity is at this end, we expect to have the same angular velocity at the other end. So they have to be, they have to rotate with the same speed. We do not use gear ratio in this case because they are directly connected together. Does that make sense? Now we have rule number five, which says how much is torque? Torque would be the same. Because if I have torque at one end, the same torque would, should apply at the other end to have that element in equilibrium. In two and three, we have gears directly connected together. In four and five, we have gears connected by shaft. All right, <clears throat> let's use these five rules to solve two easy questions. I just wanna see if you understand the concept or we need more explanation. So I'm asking you two questions. First, consider this system, which of these four gears rotates faster? So we have three gears and one, in one motor, a, B, C, and D. Which one rotates faster? So that is question number one. Question number two is, consider this system. We want output of torque equal to 100 newton meter. How much would be the input torque at motor to have the output equal to 100? So this requires a bit calculation, but the other one is just conceptual question.